So today, I'm taking a look at the Jet KVM. Now this is an Ethernet based mini KVM, so a keyboard, video, mouse. It emulates a keyboard and mouse and a USB flash drive, and it reads in the HDMI from a target computer to let you remotely manage your computers from around the world. It's also got a lovely screen on the front that shows you the status, the IP address, network connectivity, things like that. It looks really nice. So if that sounds good to you, then come along on this adventure. Now a few disclosures. First off, this is currently a Kickstarter product. So they are crowdfunding to raise money to complete the production run of this unit. Kickstarter backing is not the same as buying a product. It does not guarantee you will receive it. So be careful with your money. Don't spend too much backing Kickstarters. I have a relatively high confidence they'll succeed because I'm holding a prototype in my hand that has the finished die tooling for the enclosure and things like that, but they could still fail, you never know. Now also, these guys sent me this unit for free for review. No money changed hands either way, and they won't see this review until you do. I did send them bug reports for the software, and they have fixed all of the problems I sent already. So anyway, let's see what we got here. So my unit didn't come in retail packaging. Let's take a look at what I got. Oh wow, this is uh, quite a fancy little thing here. And there we are, the Jet KVM. Very glossy front screen. No peel on this unit. Taking a look at the back, we have the RJ45 and the, I believe this is an RJ11, it's a six pin, as well as mini HDMI and a type C. They also included cables for this to full size HDMI and type A. Otherwise it looks like it's pretty solidly built. So yeah, let's take a look at it. So he also sent me a unassembled circuit board just for video purposes so I don't have to tear it apart. And so we got the RJ45, the RJ11. It's powered by a rock chip, RV110663. Probably put that data sheet up on the screen. That looks like an ethernet pulse transformer. That looks like a memory chip. It's gonna be the display connector. And the bottom side, we have USB and HDMI. So I've got their quick start guide up. I've got a mini PC, play the role of the victim here. I've got two ethernets. Okay, so I don't have any breakout for the RJ11. The RJ45 is ethernet, mini HDMI, and USB. So type C, mini HDMI, get in there. Full size HDMI, USB. Looks like this guy's powering up now, but so is my mini PC. Should probably plug in my network. It's got a MAC address, USB connected, HDMI connected. I'm gonna get an IP. There we go, there's my IP. That's a very clear screen. Okay, so we go to that IP address, so we get set up your Jack KVM. I'm going to tentatively start with no password. I can come back and change it later. There we go, I have the victim. You can see the cursor is kind of following me. I don't remember what my password is in this computer. Oh, well, I guess I remember it now. So what happens if I want to paste some text? How does, how does one paste? Paste from host. There's a button for it. Oop. Enter moves in the text box. Confirm paste. This, uh, this might take a little while here. I guess it does have to like literally type it out though, which is kind of a pain. A few moments later. Okay, so maybe pasting the entirety of the script of the B movie at one time was not a good idea. It's typing it out on the virtual keyboard and it's working just fine. But um, the B movie is kind of long. And I don't want to wait for this whole thing to type out. So next up, I'm going to play with booting into Linux ISOs and things like that. And there's one topic that comes up with the Jet KVM that's probably its only major downside, and that is how you power it. So of course, the Jet KVM only has three ports that are in use right now. Ethernet, which is not supplying power, HDMI, and USB Type-C. It relies on power from the same USB Type-C that it uses to communicate with the target device. And that is of course perfectly fine since USB does supply power. The problem comes if the device doesn't continue to supply that power when it's turned off or reboots. So initially I was testing with this little mini PC here, I probably got a video on it somewhere. And this particular mini PC does not power any of its type A ports when it's turned off. And in the case of mini PCs, that's pretty common. So I tried to use a powered USB hub. However, my USB hub was a type C hub. So I plugged into the type C port and that worked, but now USB emulation didn't work. 
turns out the BIOS in this thing only accepts USB keyboards and mice from the USB 2.0 ports on the back, not the USB 3 or Type-C ports on the front. So I couldn't use the emulated keyboard through the Type-C port and also get power through the Type-C hub. Now, I also found that this computer actually does supply power through the Type-C port, but just that one port. So there's no combination of cables I can use to hook up to the Type-C and get USB keyboard and mouse emulation into this thing that works in the BIOS and also get power. Now, that's of course mostly the limitation of this mini PC having weird combinations of ports, but it's not entirely uncommon. Here is another mini PC. Now this is not like built as a mini PC, this is older. It's a desk mini. It fits a socketed Ryzen AM4 generation CPU, and it basically brings out all the Ryzen IO directly to the back panel, and that's it. So this unit, I've already got a mouse dongle in here, all of the type A ports supply power when it's turned off, and they work in the BIOS. So with this mini PC, I can use the Jet KVM with no problems without using a power splitter or something like that. Now, of course, the solution to this is to get a powered USB hub, find what ports on your device work for keyboard and mouse, which is not all of them, which can be very frustrating. That's, of course, on the device side. And also then plug your hub into one of those ports and power it separately. Now, if you have higher end hardware, especially stuff that uses socketed processors, that seems to be more like desktop grade. It's probably going to power a lot more things from its standby supply than these laptop based mini PCs will. It's just a generalization though, not a rule. So over here in the web UI, I can open a virtual keyboard so I can mash the delete key. And also I can click on virtual media to mount an ISO. So they're working on browser mount where you can directly pick an ISO on your local computer and not even download it, which is cool. I could upload it to the built-in storage or I could choose something from URL. So they've put together a list of really common ISOs you're probably gonna want. In this case, I'm gonna pick Debian, but you could also pick Ubuntu, Fedora Arch. Netboot at XYZ is also cool. So this actually boots Netboot directly as an ISO. And then from there, you can Netboot other things. So I do like how they have really common Linux ISOs available. It'd be nice if you could somehow customize this list to add your own links that just show up repeatedly in the future. So I would add, for example, like Proxmox VE and Proxmox Backup Server. Those are things I use a lot, but this is really nice. And now ready to mash the delete key, I push the power button and we go off and we're in the BIOS. So now I can hide the virtual keyboard because all the other keys work for me. So I'm gonna go over to boot and so Kali is the default and it found Jet KVM Virtual Media, but I'm just going to force boot to Jet KVM. Okay, so we're in the Debian installer. It's working just fine. Another neat trick we can do is we can mount ISOs. So I've here mounted an ex-Ubuntu ISO and I chose this ISO because it's pretty big. So I chose Zubuntu because Ubuntu's ISOs are really massive. This one's almost four gigs and the regular Ubuntu is six gigs, which is huge, bigger than Windows. Now, large ISOs are definitely a problem that some KVMs face, especially ISO files, not USB image files. So I wanted to try large ISOs, they work fine. One downside though is that this does take internal storage and there's only eight gigs of internal storage. Now for the price point of this device, I completely understand because adding say 32 or 64 gigs would be a very significant chunk of the cost of this device. But still I would like to see a higher priced, higher tier version that has more ISO storage for people that need it. In case you're wondering by the way, this is what it looks like as a USB emulation. Linux Foundation Jet KVM USB emulator device. So it shows up as a hit keyboard, a hit mouse, and SCSI mass storage. So other fun features in the software, we can check for updates. They've been pushing updates pretty frequently now, so I just updated this yesterday. And while I've been testing this device, I noticed a bug, I reported it to them. They had a fix out to the update stream in less than a day. So I could just click update, my device updated itself, and it's fixed. So, neat. You can also log in over SSH if you enable developer mode. So you have to use SSH public key auth. So if I paste my public key in here, we can log in over SSH. So here's what it looks like when I SSH in. So it's running its own build based on BusyBox. Everything here points to BusyBox. So it's a really embedded distribution. It's not really like Debian or Arch or something like that. Another feature they have now is the Jet KVM Cloud. And I'm gonna try that out now for the first time. So currently it looks like they're allowing sign-in with Google, which is not my favorite, but I get that they don't want to be an authentication provider of their own. 
Okay, so now I've authenticated with Google, I can name it. And I'm here on Jack KVM directly. So I get that these guys don't want to be an authentication provider of their own. So they're relying on Google for that, which at this point in their company's life cycle makes a lot of sense. Over time though, I would like to see them transition away from relying only on Google and either open it up to more providers or do their own authentication on their own so we don't have to rely on Google authentication for this. That said, this was super simple. So from the device's webpage, I click a link, it takes me to their cloud, signs into their cloud, logs into their cloud, all that stuff, and then I can see the device's webpage from the cloud directly. So they're relaying WebRTC traffic, this whole thing is based on WebRTC. They're relaying the WebRTC traffic through their cloud if necessary. So next up, I'm gonna run the Blurbusters high-speed camera test. This is gonna flicker back and forth between black and white with a number on the screen. And this will tell me how many frames delayed the WebRTC view is from a real monitor connected to the real computer. Now this computer is running Zubuntu. It's set to mirror both displays over HDMI and DisplayPort. This is as close as I can get to a exact setup. So here we go. So watching the footage back, it looks like the real display is ahead by about five frames. So that would mean that the device and the entire pipeline of encoding, transmitting over the network, displaying on my laptop is adding about five frames of latency which is 83 milliseconds, so not bad. So what do I think about the Jet KVM? Well, these guys have really done a great job of optimizing to a price. The current Kickstarter backing price for this thing is $69. Nice. So to hit that price point, they obviously had to decide what features were most important. Now that is significantly cheaper than most of the other KVMs I've reviewed. I don't think I've seen anything under $100 yet. So. That's a pretty good selling point to start with. So what do I think they compromised on to hit that price point? And the two things that come to mind to me are power and storage capacity. So for power, they could have either added an additional connector, which would have required more space on the device because the connector area is already kind of full, but they could have added another connector for separate power input. Now, I believe you can back power it through the RJ11, but currently they haven't released any of the RJ11 accessories yet or the pinout, so I can't confirm that for sure. The other option for power would have been to provide power over ethernet. So with PoE, I could have plugged into one of my network jacks, supports PoE, powered the thing right up, and my mini PCs that don't provide constant USB power would not have been a problem. Now, a lot of PCs do provide constant USB power and that doesn't matter to you at all, but it depends on what hardware you're using and having a second source of power input would have been nice. And the second thing is storage capacity. So depending on what your use case is, you may or may not need a lot of storage. So if you're going to hook this thing up to a single computer, a, a real server somewhere, you probably only need one ISO on the device. And that's whatever ISO you use to image that server. It could be Proxmox VE, could be Windows Hyper-V, something like that. And this will fit that one ISO just fine on the eight gigs of internal storage. If you're the kind of person that carries this thing around, to hook up to computers all day, you're probably going to want more storage for a variety of ISOs. And that is something this is not gonna provide. Now I completely understand they're trying to hit the $69 price point. That makes sense. When they come to production and move out of Kickstarter, I'd like to see them add another SKU with a higher capacity EMMC module. I'm also really impressed by the electronics design. So I study computer engineering, which is related to electrical engineering. I've worked in power electronics, microelectronics, stuff like this. And there are very few parts on this board. They have designed to exactly what they need and no more. So that starts with the Rockship SOC. This is nearly fully integrated. They don't really need many chips to build a complete solution here. This is reading in HDMI. It's outputting the USB device emulation. It's doing all that. So they picked a good chip to start from. And obviously they just have their USB-C and their HDMI connectors for the target computer. These are nice and compact. And their RJ45 and RJ11 for expansion and ethernet. So the Jet KVM is my favorite ethernet based KVM I reviewed so far, of all the KVMs I've looked at. Now, if you want something USB based that you use with a laptop, there's a different one that I like, video down below for that one for my video on it. If you want to back the Jet KVM on Kickstarter, link down below for that. Also link to their website, which has great documentation. If you want to chat with me about anything, I have a Discord server link for that as well. And if you want to give me any tips, I really appreciate them. Link down below to my Kofi. So as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.